I've created this amazing 3D scene with an ink and a parallax transition and all of this took me only a few minutes in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So stick along this video and learn some of my best tips and tricks. To get started we will drag our ink clip for the transition onto our second video layer. And then we go to effects and drag a fusion composition on top of it. Now we will expand the fusion composition and put the cursor on the end of the ink transition clip. Then we head over to the fusion page. In here we will select all of our images and drag them into the node graph. You can delete all these merge nodes because we need a special merge node, a merge 3D. So click four times on this image plane node and you can see our merge 3D node automatically appears. Then we also need a renderer 3D. Connect the merge 3D to the renderer 3D and the renderer 3D to the media out. Now you can drag all of the media ins into the image planes and get a camera 3D and connect it also to the match node. Now I will close the media pool again so we have more space and we need to be in split view mode. So we have a view on the left side and one on the right side. If this isn't the case for you, you can just click this icon to get into the split view mode. Now I will zoom in a bit and you can see there are two dots on the merge 3D node. These dots indicate on which side of the split view the node will be visible. If you click the left one, it will be shown on the left side. So on the right side is our media out and on the left side is our 3D node. And as you can see, the camera doesn't show anything because it's on the same layer as our other images. So we will select the camera and pull it back. Now you can see one of the images and it has these little artifacts. And that's because all of the images are on the same layer. So I will select the tree, the single tree, the cutout tree and move it to the front and a little bit to the left. Then I will use these two dots to see which image is which. This is our hat. So we take this image plane and move it to the right. This is the night image. We want to keep this. And this is the day image. I will disconnect the day image. We will need it later. Now let's take the tree and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V and connect the second version to the merge node 2 and drag it to the right and a little bit more to the front. Then in the inspector go to transform and scale it up to 1.5. And I will move it just to the corner, to the side of the image. Now we want to make our animation where the camera moves to the side. And we have already put the cursor on the frame where our ink transition ends. So let's head a few frames further and click on the camera. Then go to the transform and click the keyframe icon on the X translation. Now you can move the playhead 25 frames further. And in the 3D view, drag the camera to the right. I will drag it so far that the tree isn't visible anymore. This point. And now we have to align the images. So I will use the heart and because the image seems closer to the camera, I will put it closer to the camera in our 3D scene too. And I will put it to the right. So it completely fits. And we can scale it down. Like this and adjust the position. But if you move the playhead, 
back, you will see that our image from our heart now overlaps onto our first image. And to avoid that, um, we will have to use a mask. Our HUD image is the media in 4 in my case. So let's get a rectangle mask and connect it to the media in. Change the height up to 1 and the width also. And now we will go to the first frame where our HUD should be visible. And it's this one. So I will go one frame back. And I will animate the center attribute of our rectangle. Then we will go another frame back and move the rectangle completely out of our frame. Now we can see it isn't visible when there's our first image. And if we go further, it will be visible on the right side of our tree. To smooth out our animation, I will click on the camera 3D node and go to the spline, click this X offset button, then I will drag the selection box over both keyframes and press S on my keyboard. And now the spline curve is smoothed out, but I want to make it even smoother, so I will press T and you can now adjust these ease in and ease out values and I will use 60 on both. Now our spline is even smoother. Uh, we can close it again. And before we before we create the ink transition, I will click on the render 3D node and go to the settings and enable motion blur. Now we will go back to the edit page, take this fusion composition, press Ctrl C and paste it and move it exactly under the ink clip and just extend the front of it and you can delete the back until it hits the end of the ink clip. Now we go onto this fusion composition and go back to the fusion page. We can connect our daylight image to the merge node. This is our nighttime image. We will delete this one. So we have our daylight image with the same two trees in front of the camera. Now if you go back, we click on the ink transition clip, change the composite mode to Lum, it's short for luminance, and on the fusion composition, on the, on the original, the top one, we will change the composite mode to foreground. And to round things up, I will go back to the effects and add an adjustment clip on top of all of these clips spread it out until the end, then go to the first frame, make a keyframe on the zoom attribute, then go to the last frame and zoom in to about 1.15. Now the camera zooms in over time onto our clips and I will add another effect and it's the camera shake. Drag it onto our adjustment clip and move the motion scale way down as well as the speed scale. Now let's play it back and I hope you are happy with the result. And if you want to watch another tutorial on a similar technique, watch this next video.